Well, I got my notes, check. Sunglasses, check. Hat, check. Pepsi, check. Thick skin, check. Let's go. Hey, welcome to Going to Blue Dude, everybody. If you're a college football fan, might as well hit the like and subscribe button because that's all we do over here. Go check out our Patreon page. We call our Patreons the Shot Callers because that's exactly what they do around here. And when the regular season gets here, our Patreons will get to decide which game we'll live stream and you'll get to watch with Going to Blue Dude. And the score prediction contest will be coming back. Every week I pick out a game and my Patreons guess the score and whoever comes closest to the score wins 20 bucks every single week and you can win as many times as you want. The higher the Patreon, the more guesses you get per week. Well, according to CBS, they feel like all this conference realignment is heading towards the Big Ten and the SEC breaking off and creating their own playoffs. But there's a certain order that things need to go through. And this is the order that they think it might go through. First, it is the Notre Dame domino. I mean, that's what's going to decide the fate of conferences and certain teams. So we got to talk about Notre Dame first. Notre Dame will decide the future of the ACC because if Notre Dame stays in the ACC and brings in West Virginia, the ACC continues to exist and can renegotiate that terrible, terrible TV deal. A lot of people are saying, oh no, Golden Blue Dude, ever since divisions were dropped, the ACC can just bring in Notre Dame and renegotiate their TV deal. No, that's actually not the case. Notre Dame is actually already built into the TV contract, so if they join as a full-time TV member, they don't get to renegotiate the TV deal. They just have to split the pie with even more people talking about Notre Dame. So Notre Dame would have to bring somebody with them, and it would be West Virginia, and then the ACC could possibly renegotiate that TV deal. But if Notre Dame goes to the Big Ten, the ACC is going to get picked apart. There's just no way around that. I, I, I've tried to figure it out. Maybe the ACC can pick out the Big 12. I don't see that happening. Pac-12 teams? No, I don't see that happening. I think the ACC gets picked apart if Notre Dame does indeed join the Big 10. Now, if Notre Dame does go to the Big 10, who does the Big 10 bring in with Notre Dame? Well, the first choice is nobody. There's no division, so they don't have to bring in anybody with Notre Dame. But the second choice is Oregon. Oregon is the biggest brand left in the Pac-12. They are big time money makers, but I've heard it's a headache to get to Oregon because of the flights gotta go into Seattle and then a bunch of other rigmarole. So it's not high on the priority other than they are a big time money maker and they are the biggest brand left from the Pac-12. The third option, which might actually make the most sense, believe it or not, is Stanford. Stanford would add another traditional rival for Notre Dame and that would make five, five, five traditional rivals for Notre Dame within the Big Ten. You'd have Michigan, Michigan State, Purdue, USC just added, and then Stanford. And the Big Ten is going to make decisions based on, hey, is this going to attract Notre Dame or not? They still have hope that Notre Dame will join the Big Ten. So it's going to be like, hey, uh, Notre Dame, so we already brought in USC, right? That's a traditional rivalry. What if we uh, brought in Stanford? Then would you join us? And if Notre Dame says yes, then the Big Ten will bring in Stanford and Notre Dame. But if Notre Dame says, no, we're not going to join. Sorry, it's not going to happen. Then the Big Ten will bring in Oregon and Washington. So that also depends on Notre Dame. So let's go down the rabbit hole of if Notre Dame goes to the Big Ten, what happens to the ACC? Well, I've already said it. They're going to get picked apart. But who goes where? Well, I'm already hearing that the SEC is in preliminary talks with Clemson, Florida State, Virginia and North Carolina. My list was Clemson, Florida State, Miami, and North Carolina. That's what made the most sense. Maybe Florida's like, hey, we only want one more Florida team. And since we play Florida State every year, let's, let's just bring in Florida State, but no Miami. So this might be about Florida saying, we don't want any more than one more Florida team coming in. But if the SEC is continuing to get to that 24 mark, then maybe they could talk Florida into allowing Miami and Virginia Tech. So you'd have a total of Clemson, Florida State, Virginia, North Carolina, Virginia Tech, and Miami. Then it's the Big Ten's turn. And I think the Big Ten could get Pitt, Syracuse, NC State, and Duke. All four are AAU status, and apparently that means something, unless you're Notre Dame. They've literally said the only exception to that rule is Notre Dame. Go Google it. That's a real thing. Syracuse is a big TV fan base, but yeah, they, they don't support their team very well. But there is potential there. 
and maybe playing Big Ten schools would bring out more fans. And then there's Pitt, they already have built-in rival with Penn State. And then NC State and Duke, they bring a big basketball following. I just don't know if Duke would make the cut because of football. This is strictly about football, so I'm on the fence. Maybe NC State needs a partner, a North Carolina partner, and that's when they bring in Duke. I don't know. I'm still on the fence with Duke. Then the third thing would be the Big 12. They could come in and get Louisville and Georgia Tech. And along with Louisville and Georgia Tech, they could also get Oregon, if the Big Ten doesn't bring in Oregon, Washington, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and Arizona State out of the Pac-12. Say, hey, we know the Pac-12 is sinking. You guys need a landing spot. We're willing to stretch a little farther west. Let's go. Come on in. A lot of these teams will have landing spots. The question then would be, would the Big 12 have enough clout to be invited to the Big Ten SEC playoffs and national championship? My personal feeling, yeah, I, I think they would have enough clout, but I'm not the decision maker. So if the SEC and the Big Ten say, no, no, you guys don't have enough clout, and we specifically broke off to leave everybody that's not in with the Big Ten and the SEC out, so sorry, but you're not invited. And guess what? These are the biggest brands that would be left out of the primary playoff and national championship. Oregon, Washington, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, Arizona State, Oregon State, Washington State, Cal, West Virginia, Oklahoma State, Iowa State, Kansas, Kansas State, Texas Tech, TCU, Baylor, Houston, BYU, Cincinnati, Wake Forest, Boston College, Louisville, Georgia Tech, and UCF. A lot of those names are household names. They are big brands. Some of those, not so much, but you get the picture. A lot of names that we all know very well would have no shot of playing in the primary, the main, the biggest playoff and national championship possible. Even if the Big 12 leftovers and maybe the group of five split off and created their own playoffs and national championship, and they would make money doing that, it wouldn't be the biggest of the biggest. There would always be an asterisk, just like the FCS. Yes, they have their own national championship, but it's nothing compared to the FBS National Championship. Here's the caveat to that. Meanwhile, teams like Northwestern, Indiana, Illinois, Rutgers, Maryland, Duke, either or, I'm still on the fence with them. Syracuse, either or, still on the fence with them. Vanderbilt would be included because they're already in the Big Ten or the SEC, or they were added through expansion. Almost all the names on this particular list don't really compare to most of the names on the list that was left out. So that's going to have a lot of people mad unless teams are able to get kicked out to make room for better football programs because that's what this is all about. Football, football, football. So what if in the future the Big Ten and the SEC make a clause to where, hey, if you're not performing up to levels, we're going to kick you out, even if it's just in football, to make room for better programs. Or maybe they don't put a clause in there where teams can get fired or booted out in football. But they're keeping an eye on the teams in the lower division, and if they're performing up to standards and making the money, then they could bring them up later on. Kind of like what they do with FCS now. I mean, Marshall, an example, Boise State. I mean, the newcomers, you got Jacksonville State. Something like that, where the teams in the lower division, they're either dominating or they're performing up to standards, Big Ten, SEC standards. And they're making a lot of money for that lower division. And the Big Ten and the SEC is like, you know what? You've done enough. Come on up. Maybe they could do something like that. In that case, then everything changes. And I got to come up with a whole new video for that scenario. Anyways, y'all let me know in the comments section what you think about this particular direction. CBS seems to think it's going to come true. We already know ESPN thinks it's going to come true. They're behind everything. But what do you think? You think this is the future of college football? And if so, how do you feel about it? That's all I got for you for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on my next show.